I'm glad that went well. <laughs> all right. Hey, folks. So let's talk about how all this was made. Michael here has the scene open in Unreal Editor so we can take a closer look. For the environment, we built this level using Quixel Megascan assets, many of which are available in the Fab UEFN plugin. We also used custom content that we built just for this demo. For the gameplay you just saw, we, ha we hand placed enemies using a creative device called a guard spotter, which generates the aliens that you saw at specific locations. However, we wanted to do more and introduce dynamic play that goes beyond what the current creative devices can do. So to do this, we used our new programming language called Verse. So in this short section of code, every second, we grab the position of the player. And for each spawn location, we then calculate the distance to the player. And if it's within a certain threshold, we tell that guard to spawn into the level. So now we have gameplay that's more reactive to the player's actions. This is just a short example of using Verse, but for a deeper dive, check out the Verse Tech Talk later today. Now Michael is going to show us how we put the intro cinematic together. Hi, everybody. So before the gameplay section, we played this quick cinematic uh, animation. This was actually created entirely in UEFN using Sequencer. Sequencer is our multi-track editor, and it's been used in everything from in-game cinematics to Hollywood feature films. So let's take a look. Uh, and now all of this stuff is available right inside UEFN. So let's take a look at this last shot from a slightly different perspective. So the other thing we featured in this section was a bunch of Niagara. Niagara is now available in UEFN, and it's our uh, high-end VFX system. So, uh, and just like in the movies, you, get, you can frame up shots and have great effects. So what we're going to do here is just set this up. So just like in the movies, you can have slow-mo too. Makes everything better, right? <laughs> so these are just a sampling of some of the stuff that you can do inside Sequencer. But let's get back to the game. All right, so now that we're back in the game, in UEFN, you have access to Fortnite's time of day system. Or you could use what we did and do what we did and use a completely custom lighting solution. And thanks to Lumen, both daytime and nighttime look great. Now, let's go to the final gameplay section and let's close out the demo. But as a reminder, everything that you're seeing here was created in the same version of UEFN that we're releasing today. I think I'm going to jump in here and help you, right? I'm all for that. Unreal Editor for Fortnite runs on PC and is integrated directly with Fortnite, so you have access to over four years of content, all for free, to get you started. What's special about UEFN is what we call Live Edit. Live Edit allows anyone on your team to join a UEFN session from any platform that runs Fortnite. That means someone can join from a console using the normal Fortnite client, and they're able to work alongside and collaborate with PC users. UEFN has access to all Fortnite creative devices, our modular gameplay systems that work in the in-game editor. This allows you to instantly add gameplay and quickly bootstrap your game from the hundreds of gameplay devices already available. The UEFN beta has many of the same features we use to create Fortnite, including the landscape editing toolset. You can edit the landscape to change the look of your island 
or make sweeping changes to create something completely new, and then quickly play it in-game to check out the results. So even though you have access to tons of Fortnite content, with UEFN you can make content that looks nothing like Fortnite. This is a section from Forest Guardian, a tech demo built in UEFN that we are launching today. A big feature of UEFN is the ability to import your own custom assets, so we used a few 3D models, textures, and materials that we built just for the project. And all the lighting in the cave was made possible thanks to Lumen, our real-time global illumination system. You can also find more content like Quixel Megascans and Sketchfab models in our initial alpha release of the Fab plugin for UEFN. All assets are curated and optimized for use in Fortnite, and the full version of Fab will launch later this year. You can also create and modify materials, so you can change the look and feel of objects easily. And you can import skeletal meshes, and then animate using sequencer and control rig. Everything you've just seen is available today in the public beta version of Unreal Editor for Fortnite. We upgraded with broad strokes using Lumen, Nanite, and other UE5 tech. We worked directly with the engine team to improve these features and ensure they scaled on all platforms Fortnite ships on. First up was lighting. Now, our options in the past to improve lighting have been somewhat limited because Fortnite is a really dynamic game. Big lighting just doesn't work because the moment a player destroys a wall, light maps are invalidated. So we were really excited to give Lumen a shot. It updates global illumination in real time as the environment changes. Early in Chapter 4 development, we captured a video of Lumen enabled in a Fortnite test build. And the player in the video destroyed a wall, and, and light just came flooding into the room. And honestly, it was pretty stunning. It brought new life to the environment, and the realistic bounce light worked great with Fortnite's vibrant style. While initial results were exciting, you know, nothing is that easy in game dev. And as we discovered, real-world lighting can create real-world problems. Playtests revealed areas of the map, like attics and basements, that uh, had no windows and were just too dark for gameplay. And it was also the first time we were using auto exposure, and it was causing bloomed out areas when players were in dark interiors looking outside. We solved these issues using UE5 features like local exposure and some art directable controls within Lumen that enabled us to provide a final image much better for gameplay. While the art team refined content, the engine team provided some new scalability options so that we could run Lumen on next-gen consoles at 60 frames per second. In addition to lighting, Nanite opened the door for us to add an incredible amount of detail to the Fortnite island. It was introduced in UE5 as a virtualized geometry system that supports extreme mesh complexity. So we spent some time experimenting, looking for a good balance between stylized art direction and detail so we could increase visual quality, but still maintain Fortnite's uh, iconic style. Now that artists weren't limited by triangle counts, we scaled our content pipelines to um, support Nan on, on high-end hardware. Tech artists modeled new vegetation assets, and the art team created some uh, high-detailed props and some amazing hero assets. But this still left us with a large building library that needed a visual upgrade. We resolved this using an offline process that took displacement maps from our materials and created high-resolution nanite meshes. It was really cool to see these classic Fortnite materials like brick, stone, and wood get a high-resolution facelift and pop off their surfaces. Now, past nanite demos have relied on static hard surface environments, but Fortnite's an animated world. Trees blow in the wind, and buildings wobble when hit. So we worked with the Nanite team, and they extended the material pipeline to include masked and animated materials on Nanite geometry. The island in Fortnite is constantly evolving, with major changes each season and complete reboots when chapters launch. So it's essential that we evolve our workflows too. During chapter four development, we started utilizing two new UE5 features that changed how we build levels, world partition and one file per actor. World Partition automates the level streaming, and it allowed us to work in one large level. We use level instance actors to group content logically, like a building and all of its props. One file per actor ensured our large dev team could work in this space without source control conflicts. Now, these features hadn't yet been put to their paces by a large dev team, so there were some early bumps in the road. 
but RLDs were in daily communication with the engine team, and we saw consistent improvements. Not long into production, we were developing Fortnite in a much more collaborative environment. Our goal for Chapter 4 was to deliver an awesome experience to our players. But we also hope by using and improving the engine's newest features, we've improved your experience as well. <laughs> <laughs>